Welcome back to On Listening. This is your host, Daniel Rosen. Today, I'm here with my friend Tempest Diamond, and we've played around with a little hypnosis and trance work, and I got really interested in her style of listening and how she listens, so I invited her on the show. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. My pleasure. And the audience is in for a treat. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> this will be fun. Yes. So to get straight into it, why don't you tell us what you do? What I do? Well, as we, you know me primarily as a coach and a hypnotist, but I always say I'm a writer first and everything else second, but you would never know that if you paid attention in my life. Well, I, and I didn't. <laughs> well, I spend a lot of time struggling, I felt, I feel, as a writer more than ever writing. So uh, everything else and everything else I've done and studied in the performing arts, even and especially hypnosis, ironically, informs my ability to write the way I want. So it's an interesting writing style. And how's that? What's the intersection of that writing with listening? Well, one thing I had to learn to do to finally write without all the struggle was to actually listen to the media and just really pay close attention uh, to the media. And I really think, it's, particularly as a creative type, you have to learn to listen to your own body and feelings in ways that other people just don't. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about how you listen to your body and feelings in the way you imagine other people don't. We, we in the U.S., we, we still have that, hmm, you know, that background, the, the roots of the entire British upper lip, the, the stiff, stiff upper lip, right, where sort of being okay meant being unaffected. It's not okay to be anything but happy or look happy if you can't manage the latter, if you can't manage the former, manage the latter. And you just have to give up all of that as a hogwash if you want to create work that matters. Yeah, my, I just had a flash to uh, J.K. Rowling and Harry Potter and some of her other writing where she... Uh, she enjoys uh, mocking that so much sometimes. Uh, that That's good. Okay, so there's this sort of societal repression of our emotional experience, and you need to rid yourself of that in order to listen. So once you've done that, when you're ridding, then what are, what are you listening to? What are these? How do you listen to feelings? And uh, I think listen to your body, as you said. Well, uh, so... To me, anyway, ironically, the better you get at understanding yourself, the much easier it is to see what's sort of un being taught. To, how do you say this? Being said underneath the lines or, you know, your ability to read between the lines and understand body language, understand what that tone of voice means. And this is what you start to listen for. So you recognize how much of communication is nonverbal, and you now pick up things that others don't. Right. So we're squarely outside of simply auditory. And I think I talked about this in some other episodes that everybody seems to experience listening as broader than the auditory function of sound waves and that we listen uh, with sight as well uh, and definitely so in one of the other lives i've spent a good deep dive as an adult studying the meisner acting technique three years three intense years of acting which is what led me to writing scripts and for tv is one of the I should say the primal rules, one of the most important rules is it's not about the words. Right. And that sound that might sound complicated because we're always so worried about just what to say. 
but we're, we're not androids, right? So we pick up on tonality. We understand the difference. So if we use the exact same words, we can still communicate lots of meaning. So if I say, hey, Dan, I like your sweater. And you're like, you like my sweater? You're surprised? Maybe this a little matter of fact? You like my sweater? You're amazed. Right? We can do that at any time, but we tend to forget it because, again, the golden standard seems to be the unspoken golden rule is that we are unaffected. We don't have emotional highs and lows. We kind of stay flatlined. So you're saying that it's a, we want to move, a, a higher quality of listening is to move past those emotional uh, flatness and look for the depth. So tell us, tell us what we should, uh, what should we listen to and how, why should we practice listening a different way? Well, there's absolutely no reason to practice listening any kind of way or any, with any, with any new technique, unless there's something you're doing that's not working exactly the way you wanted to. So one of my first go-tos is if you explain what your current process is, great. How's that working for you? What, what, are the, what results are you seeing? Is there anything you wish you could change? And if the answer is great, great, and no, well, then stick with exactly what you're doing. Uh, you've mastered it. <laughs> For me, this is an ongoing practice because I I understand that we're essentially all wounded children at like at our core, and words are pretty dangerous weapons, and we don't like to acknowledge that. When you do, you're a lot more pleasant to have around. When you recognize the power of words and recognize that they can uh, be a weapon. That would wound somebody. Yes. You're going uh-huh. to be more careful with them. So, but you, you started with the leveling sort of a, a little bit of a critique of the general way society listens uh, with a kind of repression of emotion. So I, I, I imagine that you have a, another way that doesn't involve that. So tell us, tell us about what you do, how you practice and the benefits that you've gotten from it. Great. So I, and thank you for bringing me back on track. I really like to pay attention to what I think is the message underneath the obvious message. When it's yourself, your body tends to give you away. And I don't know if you've ever gone floating. And this might seem off topic here, but floating as in a float tank. Yeah, I I have, but I have, (laughs) I just start to fall asleep and I have sleep apnea, so it's just a mess. (laughs) You end up sputtering. (laughs) I'm deprived of the ability to float well. Oh, no. Tell us about it, though. Maybe you had an experience. Well, okay, so a float tank for your listeners who have not yet had this um, amazing experience is about 10 inches of water and 800 pounds of salt usually Epsom salts. It's like your own personal deep sea and you can't help but float if you want to. So this is why you can fall asleep. It's perfectly safe. But another name for a float tank, an older name, is a sensory deprivation chamber because it's designed so that there is no external light or sound. So with that much quiet and stillness, you begin to see that your body has an awareness that precedes your own thoughts. I love that. I love that. Tell tell us more about that. (laughs) Uh, Well, it can be a little unnerving. And I've noticed in a tank, you're laying there and you think everything is fine. You're, You're wondering about something trivial. And all of a sudden your, your heartbeat increases. And you're like, that's odd. But before you can even completely finish the, the sentence for that thought, you then find out what was what's wrong. Right? Your body knew the thought that was coming. Like it bubbles up and out. Yes. And we under like the subconscious has reached the general. Like it's a phenomenon that people think they understand. But they don't spend any time 
exploring it, typically. So your body, again, will cue, well, yeah, cue, I think that's the word we're going for here. Your body will cue you with its own uh, special mo- movements and, and ticks to let you know how you feel about this situation before you've even processed and thought about it. So tell us how we're going to uh, listen to these kinds of things within us without without the float tank. I'm going to make an assumption that you attempt to listen to your to in, internally to yourself when you're not floating as well. Right. So I bring all of that up really, and, and hopefully listeners will get to try it out, because first you have to believe that there is more to you than you're thinking. There, and once you've completely like solidified that idea in your head, you'll notice when somebody says something and now you're playing with your ring or you are you're gently rubbing a finger, right? These are tiny, cl- cl- again with this, I'm, I'm stuck between cue and clue. It's a tiny signal that you feel anxious. You think something might be wrong, right? If you notice where you're at, then now you can pay attention to, well, what is this person in front of me doing that makes me feel that way? Oh, would you notice how they keep rocking from side to side? Hmm. They don't usually do that. It's subtle. I might have missed it. These are these are tiny examples, but this is the kind of thing that you use all the time. And that's why I say it becomes a practice. Yeah, I'm imagining talking to somebody and I start to notice that at a particular moment they fidget. They, as you said, rock side to side. Now, I might want to pay attention to that. And I'm also trying to listen to them auditorily. And then you can get in the trap of paying attention to too much and kind of missing what they're saying. (laughs) Or you notice what's coming up inside you, and then that severs the connection of connecting with them. Only if you try to, only if you try to pretend. (laughs) Right. So I feel like one of my superpowers is the ability to make an obvious awkward statement with no shame whatsoever. So in that situation, I can look at them and say, wow, I was really caught up in what your body was doing right then. And I did not hear your last few words. Yeah, that's lovely. That's a wonderful thing. They might be impressed that you noticed something they were doing that they didn't recognize. They'll tell you what they said, but they're probably going to be more curious about your observations. Yes. Right, and so now when you've done that, the co- entire conversation moves to a deeper level because you brought awareness to their actual body instead of having them walk around with all of their mm, attention and concentration only between the ears. So let's say you're uh, practicing this. Uh, you'd practice this with a client, a coaching client. You'd uh, just in your everyday life with everybody. Is there a, a particular format or you integrate it all the time? I feel like the better you get at it, the more you practice. So I started with those I was attempting to help, those who paid me to help them. Then you can't help but notice now when you're dealing with friends and family, it's very important to have a young child. This is really important there. And then we get back to, I feel like there are two big things to listen to, uh, and that's your own body like your own thinking and such, but media. And and I know that one might sound... Did you say media? Media, yes, especially TV. Why should we listen to that? I thought we're mostly being coached to avoid that. Turn that off. I know, right? This is actually what I've been told most of my life, and I I had a thing against it. I didn't watch a lot of TV and movies. But the production quality has gotten... It's outstanding these days. But more importantly, they, we've got niches because now that we have all of these streaming services, they they don't need to appeal. We don't need mass appeal. Right. So you've got these specialized shows. And one of the things I'm noticing here is that it's calling for a different quality and a different type of writing and acting. Things are getting much more real yes. in terms of what we're willing to show. So, 
at the same time, people are becoming more and more isolated. They're spending less time face to face where you're so body language and nonverbal communication is becoming a dying skill. You can watch very good media. You can pay attention to the obvious story and the story underneath that. Because if it has a very wide, if, if it's one of those things and it's won awards or you, you're just caught up in it and you can't turn it off for four episodes, right, then there's some kind of emotional conflict right, that resonates with you. Yeah, so give us, what, so just choose you know, any one as an example of uh, 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 a high-end production that caught your attention and you had to watch. Ooh, um, Sherlock. Which Sherlock? Well, I think we talked about this okay. once. There's more than one. <laughs> right. But uh, Sher- the, literally the BBC's Sherlock, um, that show finished a few years ago. That was with Benedict Cumberbatch? Yes. Right. Okay, good. Right. Um, people love watching him. Sure. Okay. Tell us about what we should be learning about Sherlock or watching. Well, I, I would challenge... I would challenge the listener to watch the first episode of the first season and see what and see what that show really teaches you about human nature and why we do something or how you get it done. Like, I feel like I could give you what I consider my hidden message for that show, but I don't know if it would be more fun to find their own. What do you think? Well, I'd love the uh, I'd love the follow up. I'd love to see. A uh, pre and post that uh, you challenge them, and then uh, me included would go back and rewatch that. I would watch that; they would watch the first time, and then we talk about it. Um, so, for those of you who don't like spoilers, uh, <laughs> stop listening now. Watch the episode <laughs> and come back. And for the rest of us who are gonna just uh, piggyback on Tempest's insights, uh, we're gonna hear those now. <laughs> I think that the hidden message under our first show is how you convert a stranger into a follower. That is so cool. (laughs) So you imagine how much thinking had to go into both for the actor and the writer into creating that message, but never stating it, never telegraphing it. It's hidden, so you can't quite notice it. See, but you're, but you have this uh, capacity to listen, this refined style of listening, and the message revealed itself to you. Now, how how do you know, there's a parallel? Of course, Sherlock's an incredible listener too. How do we uh, like? How do we get on that road to being able to do that? Whether it's TV or the person in front of you, it's always tiny piece by tiny piece. And you test it. So you, they seem to be leaning forward. This is a person in front of you now. And you're like, wow, you really like that topic, huh? Now, that'll seem like such an obvious statement that they'll know exactly what I'm doing and I shouldn't. But if you're right. What do you mean uh, I shouldn't? No, wait, wait, wait. Oh, sorry. What do you mean I shouldn't? Go ahead. Oh, I shouldn't say that. It would just be too obvious. I'll oh. seem weird or awkward. Right, but we want to develop your superpower of stating the obvious in an awkward way. Right. And when, but when you've touched on a nerve, especially an emotional one, people are happy that you noticed. They're like, yeah. Now they, you've give, you've opened the door for them to tell you about their feelings. If you're wrong, they'll be surprised and they'll just immediately correct you. Right, I leaned so forward because I was going to scratch my itch. I don't. I actually hate this topic. They might say, right? <laughs> uh huh. Okay. And it's important to find out because you you wouldn't want to assume now you know this thing about someone. So there's a little bit of um, I'm hearing in some of the interviews a sense that listening is improved when we give feedback to the person we're trying to listen to, and. Uh, hone in on the mark that we can either do that within ourselves, keep listening for the emotionally resident information, what makes our heart beat faster, what makes us feel warmer, but with another person, give some feedback 
such as I noticed you leaning forward, and that then helps amplify the signal you're trying to listen to. Yes, and this is really important for you know interpersonal communications or a situation where the people are in front of you. But what do you do when, or how do you find out more complex things that you can't test that often? Yeah, that's what I, so it's full disclosure, I'm sort of doing that with you. I'm trying to uh, provide some feedback about what I hear, meaning a simple reframe or restating a core element of what you said and hoping to amplify that particular part. But I love your next point then, right? So what do I do if it's like a more subtle thing or how do I, <clears throat> how do I get you to amplify the signal you're sending me when I can't say outwardly a prompt for you to give me more? Often, right, when it's a person and I'm really concerned, you want to see if you can get into an emotion. You, you want to tap into one or, or just pick one that you think they resonate with. So they'll talk about more what feels. What are they really feeling about? And for one of the ways I like to look at that, and we go back to TV, You'd say, huh, how do other people do this? Why, why is this being done? So what do I mean? So when our readers, if they've taken the challenge, you're going to look at the show, you're going to look at a scene, one scene. You say, assume everything there is there for a purpose. That absolutely nothing was a mistake. So With that show, I completely... that that. I completely agree. That's like part of the show is Sherlock is super observant. So there's a kind of a you want us to use the same level of scrutiny that Sherlock does within the show. That makes a lot well, of sense. I say every I think this is something that all, that most screenwriters and actors learn to do. So yeah. it, it's not a, like a Sherlock Holmes level. I'm not saying we need to be masters of deduction. And one of the first things you'd notice watching that show is it doesn't open with Sherlock. It know. opens with Dr. Watson. Oh, uh, okay. The season opens with the target. Why? Like, what's being communicated to you there? I have no the idea. The title of the show is Sherlock, but it's opening with Dr. Watson. Right, so it's the same with our listening. It's not about you. Not when you really want to find out or influence. It's not about you when you really want to understand and listen deeply. It's always about their framework and their point of view. I like that. That's really cool. And uh, you're kind of an instrument and you're allowing something to grow inside you that comes from the other person. I couldn't have said it better. Exactly. Oh, good. I, I I also want to go back to your your answer about uh, I asked you what to sir what to do when you can't ask a super obvious question and you said go for the emotion and I didn't get to double back and augment or enhance that but I I I, I do think I mean certainly as a psychotherapist I know that uh, going for the emotion is often where there's so much to learn and a person can have a more cathartic experience. And that's, uh, yeah, that's a powerful thing. So, you know, I'm thinking a little bit kind of break it down for people, give them, you know, if they want to try to operate the way you do, to some extent, there's paying attention to the minutia, small things like twisting your ring or rocking back and forth, directly, obviously stating that. There's also looking for an emotion and seeing if that if you get a res resonance on that uh, there's trying to amplify the signal from them to listen more clearly and that it also involves listening within yourself to what arises within you yes okay. and what r arises within you in response to what that other person is doing yeah I, I think it's really just a matter of coming from a place of curiosity so that you keep asking yourself and the other person good questions. Like you ask yourself good questions and you give them leading statements. You ask them good questions. And what was the second part? 
And then you give them leading statements. So you can ask yourself, is that nervousness I'm seeing right there? That's a leading statement. Right. No, this is a question for yourself. Oh, a question for yourself. Is that nervousness? Right. right. Is and that then, nervousness? And then what's a leading statement? Um, I don't know about you, but I, I could... I could use a break from this. How are you feeling? Oh, okay. Right. So my statement is, I could use a break from this. This was my leading statement yeah. because I already expect that they're, that this is likely nervous. They're anxious. They're uncomfortable in some way. Right. I don't know exactly why. That's what is this nervousness. This is someone I don't know well. Or their behavior is unusual for me right now. So I'm taking a guess. Okay. So we got some stepwise kinds of things. We got a challenge out there. I'm, I think I'm going to take that challenge. So we have a <laughs> few more minutes. Tell us, is there is there an, an area you wanted us to get to you were hoping to talk about that we didn't get to yet, Tempest? One, yeah, sure. Like sort of one weird bonus tip. Mm -hmm. And that's listen to your mistakes. Oh, nice. Yes. Right. There are, or, or is this a, sort of the new age statement? There are no mistakes. Right. So I didn't want to go there. But <laughs> right. No, we're not going. But it's a kiss, kissing cousin is listen to your mistakes. Right. So why did you make that mistake? Could there be any reason? Is there something behind it? Is there something that you wanted to tell yourself there? You know, sort of like the classic Freudian slip. Just why did that happen? And what if it wasn't and what if it wasn't a mistake? Right. What if it's a cue or a clue? The words you were struggling with. It's a because they're you the know, same kind of thing. <laughs> right. Yes. What if? Right. That's my favorite question, actually. It's a, it's a classic writer technique. It's a, you know, it's classic imagination thing. What if? What if this was exactly the way it was supposed to be? What would that mean? Yes. So if there's one last idea or technique is uh, to, to assume you're always trying to tell yourself something that you don't quite want to see. And that's what you're listening to find. Well, you're going to have to explain that a little better because you lost me. Oh, I'm so sorry. So now we're back into the realm of like the subconscious. So then assume it's always trying to communicate with you, but you can't quite hear it. Okay. And so then this is why you would pay attention to what might seem like a mistake. Now I, now I hear that better. That when you brought the subconscious into it or the unconscious or whatever you want to call it, that it's uh, trying to tell us something. Right. Ass always assume that there might be a message. So if you pa you passed your exit, great. Was it simply because you were in the middle of, you know, a conversation or listening to somebody? Or is it because you want to go somewhere else right now? I have shown up at, you know, at someone's front door at just the right time saying, uh -huh. wow, I missed. I'd have to turn around. Oh, but you know what? Now I'm not that far from. Yes. So this right. is what I mean by... Listen to your mistakes. I love it. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm going to learn how to get the difference between cue and clue eventually. <laughs> I, I, I think that you couldn't get it because they pretty much both meant the same thing. <laughs> your cues, your cues are clues. Uh, that could be a nice little shorthand. Uh, there we go. C, listen to your mistakes. That's right. C spelled uh, with a letter C. Q and clue. <laughs> and all the fun things that happen when you listen carefully, the alliteration and the serendipitous things. Mm -hmm. All right, my dear, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care. And that concludes another episode of On Listening. Again, I encourage you to visit our website, onlistening.net, and subscribe to the show. Send an email with a question, recommend a guest, recommend a topic, ask me a question. Be happy to respond. As always, or at least for now, On Listening is without commercials. I hope to continue it that way, simply for the joy of recording this. Thank you. <laughs>